Hi, uh, the cough reflex is something we've all experienced. The cough reflex is a protective reflex. It's protecting the airway. So if something irritates the airway, you know, you inhale some dust or something goes down the wrong way when you're eating or drinking, you start coughing and spluttering. And the reflex then is a method of expelling air with force to try to push out whatever's caused that irritation. There are other things that also trigger a cough and we're going to look at the anatomy of the reflex. Now, normally we'd look at the sensors, we'd look at the afferent limbs so or the sensory nerve, we'd look at the, the reflex in the brainstem and then we'd look at the efferent limb, the motor limb and then what happens as a result. Uh, there are bits of this that are missing. <laughs> uh, not all the knowledge exists. It's not entirely clear what the sensors are. We know what the afferent limb is. It's not entirely clear how the brainstem nuclei are organized to develop, to cause this reflex. The efferent limb we do know about, and we'll see some uh, links to um, when we talked about respiratory sensors in the brainstem. Either that means it's gonna be brief, or I'm gonna over explain the stuff we don't know. Let's find out. reflex, as I said, has evolved to protect the airway. Um, something triggers the sensory apparatus. Uh, the larynx is incredibly sensitive to this. Uh, if, so, if, you, if you have a drink and it goes down the wrong way, or you get a little bit of food going into the airway, it feels like a ginormous thing has gone down there and it's incredibly irritating. You just start coughing and spluttering and you can't control it. Whereas in fact, it's probably something absolutely tiny just because the larynx is so sensitive because it's the top of the airway. So it's protecting the airway. So foreign objects, pathogens, um, some gases, um, and also secretions within the airway itself. So inflammation of the airway can cause the cells of the airway to produce lots of mucus. All of those things can trigger a cough to clear out the airway because of course the airway has to be an airway. It has to be a clean, clear opening so that we can breathe easily. In the lung, we know there are a number of receptors. We, uh, if you think about respiration and how the lungs um, fill and stretch, and that triggers them then to empty. So you breathe in and out and in and out. There are mechanical receptors in the lungs. So there are rapidly adapting stretch receptors in the lungs, RARs. Um, and these are involved in transmitting that sensory information about irritation from the lung up to the brainstem. So these, these are found in the airways, in the lungs, and they don't seem to directly respond to things like capsaicin and histamine and triggers, you know, uh, trigger, direct triggers of uh, cough. So an as yet unidentified, probably, sensor is detecting the irritant and sending that information to the rapidly adapting stretch receptor and triggering that to send an action potential up to the brainstem. So, for example, if we trigger a cough with, with histamine, so that's... Um, uh, an inflammation mediator, or edema in the lungs, or capsaicin, you know, the, the spicy bit in your food, the typical triggers of these sorts of things. You can trigger a cough, but it's not that cell that's responding to it directly, but something else is telling it to fire an action potential. In addition to the, well, as you might guess, in addition to the rapidly adapting stretch receptors, there are also slowly adapting stretch receptors, SARS, and the slowly adapting stretch receptors are also considered to be mechanical receptors. These are the receptors that are probably involved in the Herring-Breuer reflex that lung has filled, lung has emptied, lung has filled. That, that feedback loop, which we've, we've talked about, I think, um, they are mostly found in the alveoli and the bronchioles. They might be involved in the cough reflex. But then there are C fibers. C fibers make up most of the sensory neurons in the airways. These are unmyelinated fibers. These are directly sensitive to capsaicin and histamine, um, to acid, to gases like sulfur dioxide, chlorine, things like that. Triggers of cough. But 
the current thinking is that it, there's, a, there's something else going on here. There are other sensors of these irritants that trigger these other neurons to send those axons. It's, it's more complicated than that. So we don't entirely know what the sensor is. There are a whole lot of sensors in the airways that respond to cough. And now we're getting onto firmer ground and that information travels back to the brainstem with the vagus nerve. Here's a chest, I've taken the left lung out and in here is the vagus nerve. Um, it's running with the esophagus, but the vagus nerve runs posterior to the heart and the hilum of the lungs. So the vagus nerve um, picks up those sensory afferent fibers. Now the vagus nerve is a busy nerve, it's cranial nerve 10. It's running down from the brainstem and carrying fibers throughout the body and it's also picking up various sensory fibers and carrying them back. So in this instance, it's carrying sensory fibers back from the lungs, some of which are able to carry information from whatever the cough receptor is. So the vagus nerve will run up the neck and up with the common carotid artery um, and the internal jugular vein up to the jugular foramen into the brainstem. Um, now the interesting thing here is that you can also sometimes cause people cough to cough by poking the external auditory meatus or the tympanic membrane or the pharynx or the pericardium around the heart or the pleura lining the lungs and sometimes the diaphragm. So not only is it not understood what the sensors for cough are, but somehow those sensors for cough are distributed to other areas of the body that you wouldn't really associate with cough. Um, but they all, all, well, um, many of them seem to be sending fibers back with the vagus nerve. That seems to be their, the main link here. Here's the brain. So here's the brain stem, the medulla oblongata and the pons and the midbrains up there. Um, we're down in the medulla oblongata today. So the, um, the vagus nerve comes in here to the brain stem, to the medulla. And those sensory fibers are running to attract in the brain stem, they're running to the, the nucleus solitarius or the solitary nucleus. The solitary nucleus is a big long string of tracts in the brain stem, and this is where we see a lot of sensory inputs coming into the brain stem. So the purpose of the brain stem, the main function of the brain stem really is to manage all of those reflexes that keep us alive, keep us breathing, manage our heart rate, manage our blood pressure, uh, make us awake and aroused and all those sorts of things, right? So that sensory information from the lungs, the, the trigger for the cough reflex is coming into the medulla. Now there isn't a cough center in the brain stem but there are respiratory centers, centers, so collections of nuclei. So a nucleus in the central nervous system is a collection of ne neuron cell bodies, and they send axons out, for that from the, out from there. So there are collections of nuclei which are respiratory centers. In the medulla, um, there's a dorsal respiratory group and a ventral respiratory group. And these nuclei are sending out axons to the muscles of respiration. So these are the muscles involved in cough, the diaphragm, the intercostal muscles, but also the muscles of the abdomen and accessory muscles of respiration. So it's not clear, and <laughs> reading around in this, I just read around in circles, it's not clear how the sensory inputs into the solitary nucleus are then linked to the motor outputs, but there are some links. There is a reflex here, you can trigger an airway to reflexively cause a cough, and I think we've all experienced this, and yet you can use your higher centers to either choose to cough, <coughs> you can make yourself cough if you choose to cough if you think about it. In fact, me talking about cough may well have made you cough at some point up to this. Um, but also if you're about to cough, often you can suppress that cough. So the higher centers of the brain are also acting upon this reflex, just like the movements of breathing. We, we breathe in and out and we don't have to think about it. There are centers in here that manage that for us, but these are all somatic muscles, so we can choose to breathe if we want to. We can choose to cough or suppress a cough if we want to, to a certain extent. So there's a lot going on here. In the next 10 to 20 years, you can add your knowledge onto this, right? But suffice to say that sensory input comes in, there's a relay in the brainstem, probably in the medulla somewhere, that links probably to those uh, ventral and dorsal respiratory groups, which then 
move the diaphragm, move the intercostal muscles and move the abdominal muscles, but also move the muscles in the larynx. So what are the stages of the cough that are triggered? Uh, and also then what are those efferent nerves? What's the efferent part, the motor part of this reflex? The first phase is the inspiratory phase. Um, There's the larynx, the airway, there's the esophagus back there. Um, and there's the vocal cords there. For you to breathe in, you need to open your vocal cords widely. You abduct your vocal cords. So in the inspiratory phase, the intrinsic muscles of the larynx abduct the vocal cords. The nerve responsible for that is the vagus nerve and it's the recurrent laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve, as we saw, it's already in the chest down here. It sends a recurrent laryngeal nerve either around the aorta or the right subclavian artery up the trachea to the intrinsic muscles of the larynx. So the vagal ner vagus nerve is also an efferent part of this reflex. So the vocal cords open widely. The diaphragm um, contracts and flattens. So the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve which is formed from spinal nerve roots C3, C4 and C5. So there are motor, somatic motor neurons involved here, upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons running out with the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm. The diaphragm flattens, the external intercostal muscles, so the muscles between the ribs, the external intercostal muscles, they at least have tone to resist the changes in pressure inside the thorax, but the external intercostal muscles can also lift the ribs up and other accessory muscles of respiration may also get involved to lift the ribs up. So that's the inspiratory phase. The volume inside the thorax increases, the uh, vocal cords open and air is drawn in. So these intercostal muscles are innervated by intercostal nerves. They're also branches of spinal nerves coming out of the spinal cord. So more upper and lower motor neurons, right? So the inspiratory phase. And then we have the compression phase. The vocal cords adduct, they close. The glottis is closed. So you've taken air in, the glottis is closed, the diaphragm now relaxes and it returns to that dome shape and the abdominal wall muscles. So rectus abdominis and the other abdominal wall muscles start to contract, increasing the pressure in the torso and starting to push air out. But the glottis is closed so the pressure inside the lungs builds. So that's the compression phase. <coughs> and then the vocal cords open and the air is able to pass out of the airway. The abdominal muscles continue to contract, the internal intercostal muscles contract and help push the air out. Other accessory muscles of respiration get involved in expiration. The diaphragm has, contract, has, has relaxed and air is pushed out through the airway at 100 miles an hour or more, hopefully blowing out that pathogen, that debris, that fluid, that mucus, whatever it was that was irritating the airway. Those are the three stages of the cough reflex. So the efferent limbs are what we might expect if we understand the anatomy of, uh, of breathing, of ventilation. Uh, the phrenic nerve, the vagus nerve, and then spinal nerves to muscles of the body wall, intercostal muscles and muscles of the abdominal wall to cause that <coughs> cough. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So the normal cough has a protective function and it's very useful, but there are some conditions which cause a chronic cough that will actually damage the airway because you cough more than you should. Asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, things like that. So it would be useful to be able to manipulate the cough reflex to dampen it in those inappropriate cases of chronic cough with antitussive um, drugs and a better understanding of the nuclei in the brainstem responsible for the cough reflex might help with that. So further work is needed. Um, but that's the, that's the cough reflex. We don't really know what the sensors are, but certainly the rapid, rapidly adapting stretch receptors and the slowly adapting stretch receptors and the C fibers are involved in carrying 
the, inf the, uh, the trigger, the action potentials for the cough reflex back up to the brainstem in the vagus nerve, into the nucleus solitarius, across to, but probably A, through the dorsal and ventral respiratory group nuclei, to the muscles of respiration. So through the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm, through the vagus nerve to the muscles of the larynx that move the vocal cords, um, and through the spinal nerves, through the somatic motor nerves, to the intercostal muscles of the muscles of the abdominal wall. It's a, it's a coordinated reflex, but these are all somatic skeletal muscles, so we can choose to move them, so we can also choose to control the cough to a certain extent. We can choose to cough if we need to like act a cough. So that's the reflex, a little bit unsatisfying, but that is uh, what you need to know at this stage. And like I say, you can add on to this in the next 10 to 20 years as knowledge expands. Okay, I hope that was interesting. See you next week. Yeah.